Hello and welcome. Today I'll be talking about the differences between the PvE and PvP game modes in V-Rising. As some of you already know, I've had the pleasure of playing alongside some great PvP players who are able to give me the tools and knowledge to succeed. I've noticed a lot of differences between the two game modes, so I wanted to give the perspective of someone who exclusively played as a PvE player before giving PvP a try for the first time. Some of the biggest concerns I had when it came to PvP were things like toxicity and the very different priorities that come with the PvP element. The way resources are acquired is slightly different in PvP, where there's a chance to get loot from other vampires you've killed in combat. I'm not a combat-oriented player by any means, so I wasn't sure I'd be able to thrive at all. I was also worried about getting raided by enemy vampires and losing my castle entirely. There was a lot of fear and anxiety of the unknown when it came to PvP for me. In order to overcome this, I decided to take the plunge with more experienced PvP players just to figure out basic mechanics under a less stressful environment. I found that by having clan members who knew what they were doing around me, it was easier for me to learn the mechanics and strategies behind PvP without having to worry about getting severely punished for silly mistakes. If you're thinking about trying out PvP but don't know anyone who's already experienced, joining a PvP server with some friends could definitely lessen feelings of anxiety since you'll at least have a familiar face around you making the experience less intimidating since you'll be experiencing things together. Another strategy you could try would be to familiarize yourself with PvP through observation of experienced PvP players. I highly recommend checking out the channels of my clan members. They all have pretty solid PvP advice, so I'll be linking their channels in the description of this video. Upon first entering a PvP server, something stood out to me. I was given PvP protection for the first few minutes after joining a server, meaning that no other vampire could hurt me and I couldn't hurt any other vampire. This gave me a little bit of time to find an open plot to place my castle heart without having to worry about getting attacked by other vampires. This is a setting that server admins can enable and is common on PvP servers. Another major difference I've noticed is that teleportation was restricted, meaning I had to think about returning to my castle more often because I didn't want to get caught by another vampire and potentially lose all my stuff I've gathered. It is common for PvP servers to restrict teleport so that PvP interactions are more likely to take place. If you'd like to know how to enable or disable these settings, go check out my advanced settings guide. I'll link it here and in the description of this video. As far as progression goes, the priority of which V-Bloods you hunt down seems to be different between PvP and PvE. For PvP, the order of importance value getting enough points to unlock the spells you want to use against other vampires, as well as the different forms. Typically for PvE, I usually progress the bosses in order, unless there's an opportunity to kill something sooner than I had planned. For PvP, sometimes bosses are prioritized for very specific recipes, rather than overall progression. Like Angram, who unlocks the first round of recipes for late game gear, the spawning of mutant rats at the vermin nest to help you get your hands on mutant grease, bombs, which I'll get back to later, and the recipe for a radiant gruel that you can use to help boost your prisoners to 100% blood type if you're feeling lucky. The entire progression cycle will feel like a race to the top so that you and your clan will be strong enough to ward off potential raids. If I had played on a server with a fresh wipe, I suspect there would have been a lot more combat during the early levels and more opportunities for high risk, high reward fights against other clans. As a PvE player, I usually would focus on figuring out what spells are best for big mob pools rather than 1v1 damage. Since all of the combat was not against other players, I would shift my priorities in clearing mobs as fast as possible, oftentimes running Ward of the Damned as my defensive spell. In a PvP setting, my priorities changed. I had a new element to worry about since there was the high likelihood I would have to fight other vampires. I decided to take Cold Snap and Blood Rage as my go-to spells and it proved to get me out of some very sticky situations. I found that the spells other vampires were running were not as diverse as you would find in a PvE environment because everyone was trying to figure out what was OP or using what was considered meta. This mindset also translated into other areas such as castle building, where honeycomb castles were considered the norm. 
Castle heart placement was usually very far away from the castle entrances in order to slow down enemies who managed to breach your castle. The castles that survived sieges were usually ones that utilized several different elements. Banshees were a popular choice because of the paralyzing effects of their fear. Mutant rats were also a great line of defense, shredding anyone who was unlucky enough to walk into the room. Even servants had a value over their head depending on what they were capable of. Servants that could heal or provide crowd control were highly prized for castle defense. Even the Stygian summoning circles were used to summon blood golems and blood witches as another defensive system. Important materials were almost always kept on the upper floors where you would sometimes have to traverse on a racetrack or maze before getting to the loot. Bombs were used both offensively and defensively. It was a lot harder to infiltrate a castle than to defend a castle because siege golems were required to breach a castle, and until a castle is breached, enemy vampires can't do any damage to the castle itself. Sometimes castles would be taken over entirely through the use of crafted keys. This was rare though because it's a lot harder to defend multiple castles than to defend just one. One of the biggest concerns a lot of people have when it comes to PvP is toxicity. This is something you can't control no matter how nice or friendly you may be. I found that by not engaging with the most toxic players on whatever server you're on, you will quickly find allies who share a common goal to have fun. Usually when entering a server that has been up for a while or that isn't starting with a fresh wipe, you will quickly find out who the toxic players are by reading the global chat. These players have no patience for others and even break several rules as long as it benefits themselves in some way. I recommend two things. One, join the Discord server of whatever PvP server you join and take a very careful look at the rules. Once you familiarize yourself with them, you will be equipped with the knowledge to know when you can report those players to admins. Two, don't be afraid to ask questions if you aren't sure about something. It's better to ask so you can avoid breaking the rules yourself. Admins exist for a reason, and they can't help you if you don't speak up, and they happen to not be around when an incident occurs. It helps if you can not only identify the player who broke the rule, but also victims of the player so that an admin can verify that an incident has occurred. Luckily, I personally didn't have any issues, but I knew exactly who to stay clear of just by reading global chat. So, you're probably wondering, would you play PvP again? Yes, I would but I probably wouldn't commit to PvP as my preferred way to play. With PvP, you might need to put aside time to be available for raid windows if the server you're on allows sieging. If you can't commit that time, I would recommend choosing a PvP server that doesn't allow castle raiding, but still allows players to fight in the open world. It's a lot harder to defend a castle or raid a castle without everyone in your clan being available. So unless you're going solo, you might want to take that into consideration. Overall, I would say it was fun, but it isn't for everyone. I would recommend giving PvP a try at least once, preferably with friends or people who are already familiar with PvP so that the process is less daunting overall. Many PvP servers run mods that can greatly enhance gameplay, so there's a lot to explore out there. If you find you don't like the server you're on, you can always go to a new server and start anew. I highly recommend checking out the V Arena Discord, which I'll leave a link to in the description. There's lots of cool people on there who are very helpful and inviting to new players or people who are new to PvP. They also run practice servers so you can familiarize yourself with PvP in general. I hope you find this video helpful if you've been considering giving PvP a try in V Rising, but maybe haven't quite taken the plunge. If you like this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe for more V Rising content, and feel free to check out my videos on other games as well. In case you don't know, my name is Sholo Q. I'm a Sholoids Quintly, Reaper, and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and post my schedule every Sunday on Twitter, the YouTube community tab, and my fandom Discord. I hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, Sholo out.